Welcome guys, so this will be one quick draft, number 18. Uh, I'll just get it started. What do we have here? Vindictive Flame Stoker. I think I have, yeah, three copies, so I will gladly take my fourth copy of that guy. Let's think about this guy. So, whenever you cast a non creature spell, he gets an oil counter. He can go well with the obviously the oil deck, but also the um, equipment deck because you're playing a lot of artifacts that count as non creature spells. So, it could be red green, red white, could be good options. Uh, obviously, there's a really good red-white card here. There's the Bladehold War Whip. It gives you a basically a 2-2 two -two double striker for 3 mana. But it also makes equipment costs... Um, it, equip it makes equipment cost 1 less to activate, which is quite cool. So it actually only equips for... Oh, other equipment, actually, yeah. Other equipment has, is, is 1 less. Armoured Scrap Gorger. I don't think I've ever picked this guy. In fact, yeah, I've got zero or four. I've never seen this in the draft before. It's sort of hit draft number 18. I've never picked it. Um, this thing seems pretty great. Um, and it's a two drop. It gets oil counters and eventually becomes a hill giant. And it's, it's ramp. It's just giving you mana... Uh, and you have to exile a card from the graveyard whenever it becomes tapped. So you might have to exile your own graveyard. If we go, if we dig deeper into this, there is actually down here something very important. There's a hex gold slash. So that's really good, I think. Um... Is it better than Scrap Gorger or Bladehold War Whip? Well, I've used Het Skull Slash. Sometimes it's good. Um, I've obviously, yeah, I've drafted the War Whip before. Um. I'm because I have zero scrap, scrap gorges. I've not used it before. It seems like a good ramp card. I want to actually try this out for once. Go red green. Um, <clears throat> let's see where that leaves us. So that's a good blue card. Good black card. Canker bloom. Yeah, this is definitely a good green card. So three two for two. You can sack it to. Do a, basically a disenchant or proliferate, which so that it, arguably that works well in an oil deck. There is a really great black card here, Anoint with Affliction. Um, but I don't want to go three colours, really. I don't think black and red are very good. Uh, I think, yeah, can a Canker Bloom is just pretty good. It means we can ignore the Anoint with Affliction, I think. Blazing Crescendo down here. Yeah, let's take the Canker Blue. I don't think I've had one of these before, actually. Maybe once. But, uh, okay, this pack, we have we are out of red and green things. Porcelain Zalot is quite powerful. I got destroyed by one of these. It was just... Um, light belly rat porcelain zealot turn 4 this is swinging in for 4 damage every turn and I just couldn't stop it uh, swooping lookout's pretty good 1-2 flying vigilance so. it's pretty nice so uh, you know 1 mana creature with 2, cre two keywords 
Nimrays of Paladin's pretty good. Uh, I feel none of these cards are good enough to dislodge me. I think we have to just take a Molten Rebuke here. Five mana removal spell. Seems fine. Now, I've never played Paladin of Predation in a deck. It's seven mana, which is pretty insane. Um, but yeah, six, seven, toxic six. Can't be. It's got evasion. Can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. Seems good. There's also uh, sky scything golfer, which does have the advantage of reach. Can't be blocked with creatures with trampling. Um, so that's also quite good, really. If we're green red, we might not really care about toxic. That's that's the only thing. There's another molten rebuke here. There's a hazardous blast here. I picked sky scythe in golf for quite a few times. I I'm going to take the paladin of predation because this is this is fun. I think we've got potential for we've got ramp. We could we could pick more ramp cards. Such as Phyrexian Atlas. Um, catch the uh, Billy Skaldwell is so good, but we're going to ignore that. Um, Awaken the Sleeper. I don't think we're going to find a Sacrifice Outlet. There, there are some Sacrifice Outlets in red, but they are few and far between, and I think they cost mana. Uh, so it could be another Molten Rebuke. Or a four drop creature, full shock splitter. It's uh this is the equipment part of uh the deck. Uh, the um it's what the f yeah, it goes well with the flame stoker. Or we just go for the Atlas. I think the Atlases are pretty common. Uh they don't get I mean they don't get picked, they go for, they go pretty late. I'd rather take a creature, I think. We need a four drop. Oh, we've got some pretty big creatures here, haven't we? Uh, seems greedy going for this guy as well, but the only other option is an atlas, I think. I think let's let's get silly. Let's have a couple of seven drop creatures. Okay. Lethal demolition. I don't think we're going to get that work to work. Chimney rabbles. Just another solid four drop. I think that's what we go for. Wow, okay. We chose, I think, feeling like we chose the wrong colours. Because, yeah, blue and black are... See, yeah, the, the AI doesn't really go for blue and black that much, I think. Um, hazardous Blast, it will have to be. Right, uh... This is this is silly. There's there's absolutely nothing left over. I'll, I'll take um, uncommon uh, blazing crescendo. It will have to be okay. Sure. Sure. There we go. Phyrexian Atlas last pick. We probably will need that. If we're uh, going for these things. Okay, Norn's Wellspring. Yeah, we're just uh, red drafting this one. And that's my fourth one. And I already have four Mercurial Spell Dances. I do not need to pick that. I can go for the Venomous Brutalizer. I think that'll be the one to go for. It's a lot of four drops, I notice, in the deck. I do like the Basilisk. I think Death Touch is just always good if it's reasonably priced. Um, yeah, so Brutalizer. And that's a bit more toxic. Right. We have a Rebel Salvo. This is big. Five damage for three mana. I don't think there's any going to be anything as good as that. No. Take the Rebel Salvo. 
wait, what's this card? Unnatural Restoration, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, and Proliferate. Well, that's not bad. There's a Traxxas Skitterfang, which is uh, I'm a big, big fan of. It's a three drop when we need three drops as well. Uh, yeah, we don't want another four drop. Yeah, okay, we've got to go for the Skitterfang, as, as interesting as this card is. I guess it's a bit dirtly. Okay, we actually have a very rare sight, which is Barbed Batterfist. I think the AI love this card, because I, I hardly ever see it. It's, uh, I think it's, it's going to be a decent two-drop in this deck. Going a bit green-red equipment. Maybe a bit of oil. A bit of poison. Plague Nurse is, of course, really good, but it's a, yet another four-drop. I think we've got, a, we've got to work on the two-drop and three-drop slot. Just got three of each. So, yeah, Barbed Batterfist is what we go for. Okay, uh, three drops. We've got the first Punisher, 3-3 three, three Menace. Just a solid card. Golem is uh, more ambitious. If we have oil things. We have, so far, two, three... Three oil things. This this might be good. This might be good. This is just this is just very solid. The furnace punisher probably that's the safe pick. Uh, but I can't I can't resist the golem. Oh, are you kidding me? Another rebel salvo, or a oh, churning reservoir to fi fix up the oil part of the deck. Uh, I think we just yeah we just have to take the second rebel salvo that's just too good. So this is the red sacrifice outlet. It's called uh, Nahiri's sacrifice. That's that's a pretty good one. So yeah, four five. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play this one. I think. Too many four drops at the moment, I would say, to take a chimney rabble. Canopy might be a good idea. Not not sold on one drops, but it's if if we've got the golem that one drop might be good. Six drop might be a bit greedy when I've got two huge creatures already. Let's go for the Fusling. Okay, Mazes Mantles. Interesting, but I think... Okay, I think we go for the Spore Singer here, because that, that can proliferate stuff. Cool, we actually get another Barbed Batterfist. That's really good. And this guy works well with equipment, so yeah. Definitely take him. And a Volshock Splitter. Shrapnel Slinger. Can blow up artifacts. And it's another two drop or another Spore Singer. Uh, let's just think. Yeah, we probably need the two drop a little bit more. Okay. Okay, Kemba, we do have a complete set of Kembas. Uh, Hex Gold Halberd is another good two drop. The Battle Chair is very expensive. It seems really cool though. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, the Halberd is the one. Right. Okay, we have. Another exuberant fuseling. Gets bigger when your creatures die. Gets all counters. False shock's better. We've got yeah. Another one. We've got we've already got two of these. 
Kunura is canopy. Oh, Gorgia Troll, pretty good if we can we can get oil counters. But Rustvine Cultivator, I think. I think we need another one of these. We need another ramp card. So I think we take that. Um, I think I'm going to trim the deck a little bit. Let's drop Thriller Possibility. Uh, yeah, drop that. I feel like we dropped the Fuseling. I don't think I'd play it. Uh, probably don't need a Shrapnel Slinger. It's just a filler card, really, that one. Uh, might need the Atlas, I suppose. Um, that takes us down to five. I think... Yeah, we'll think about we'll think about dropping the atlas. We might drop the spore singer as well. Uh, drop the blast. And leave it like that at the moment. So Yeah, I think we can we can get a couple of better two drops. A better three drop. I think actually, if I if I'm keeping those big creatures, we, we probably need the atlas. Right now, that should give us a clearer idea of what we're trying to do. I think uh, so. Mere convert is another two mana ramp card, just a mana dude. I think we go for that. Um, there is also June Mover. Hopefully, that wheels around if we're really lucky, and that can make sure we draw our land. So yeah, let's go for Mere Convert. Vents a Corpse Puppet. Yeah, I've only got two copies of these, so I'm going to grab that one for the collection. Okay, what have we got here? We've got Axiom Engraver, Lattice Blade Mantis, Maze's Mantle, Thirsting Roots, Tyranax Atrocity. Got, we're going to be playing quite a lot of ramp. Uh, it's a good chance we can get the atrocity out on turn four. So I, I say it's atrocity rather than lattice blade mantis because we've got we are doing quite well in the four drop slot. Quite well uh, set up there. Um, right. What do we reckon? Do we do we want Predation Steward? I think so. I think that is going to be quite good. Oh, that is nice. Um, Churning Reservoir. Very nice for the oil part of the deck. I think we want that one. Okay, let's think about this. So... Kind of a cool one drop. This this guy's good with stuff that pumps power. So Volshock Splitter is it's um makes this better. I think if you equip a battle fist this just dies, doesn't it? I don't think it gets to two power. But we've got we could just get another batter fist or another blade graft aspirant. So the situation yeah, we've got six six three drops, seven two drops. It's sort of yeah, there is a question of I think uh What about three drops here? Well, I think I like the idea of three barbed batter fists. That seems quite aggressive. Uh, I'll take the plague nurse here. We can sort of we've got yeah we've got three different themes. We've got toxic. We've got equipment. And we've got oil, so 
We'll just have to see which uh, which wins out. We can take that carnivorous canopy, the dune mover wheeled around, or we could just go for terramorphic expanse. Um, can we fit a dune mover in the deck? That's the question. We've got too many cards in the deck already. I feel I'm quite happy with the two drops. Um, I think I would, I'd rather take a Terramorphic Expanse because the, the Dune move might not, not make it into the deck. Because I've already got Mere Convert, which is doing the same job, I suppose. Let's do that, yeah. Okay, Mere Custodian and Thirsting Roots. Okay, Thirsting Roots is... The trouble is, it's no good if I just draw mountains, that card. And we'll take that as well. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Uh, so, yeah, we only need to cut four cards, actually. So, in theory, you would cut um, a one drop, a two drop, a three drop, a four drop. Right. But I like the one drops here. So, an easy thing to do is to cut all of the oil cards. I think we keep the Flame Stoker. And I think we keep the Scrap Gorger, but we can drop the Steward. I don't like the Skirt thing. I think we drop the Golem, though. Because, yeah, probably only only room for two out of the three themes. We still need to cut something else. Uh, maybe we cut the chimney rabble just because we're running a plague nurse. Uh, we're trying to do toxic things and equipment things and this is just just a good card, but doesn't have synergies, so we can have the threat of bit of poison and uh do some cool stuff with equipment. Now, do we care is this do we feel terrible for dropping the oil cards here? What are we missing out on? This could build up a fuseling every turn, but it's just it's still only got one toughness. Predation steward can pump things up. Yeah, it could it could play golem can just make creatures bigger. Yeah, I don't think that yeah, the oil is not too inspiring here. It feels good to actually play Carnivorous Canopy main deck. I think it's definitely main deckable. We've got Rebel Salvo to deal with bigger creatures as well, which is quite good. 
Okay, I think I'll uh, I'll call it end of part one there, and uh, I'll have a bit of a think. Uh, so thanks for watching so far, and I'm back. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm pretty happy with actually the first pass at the deck. Uh, I'm gonna stick with this and see how we do. Okay, got one drop and uh, three drops. Another three drop. This can produce extra mana on, on turn three. Ah, green blue. Not been seeing that combination uh, very often. Controller Drake. This is a pretty scary card. No, don't do that. We'll get an old counter. So I suppose I can uh, double spell next turn. One of those spells might be a carnivorous canopy to shoot down the trawler drake and proliferate. So I think I should play an Atraxus Skitterfang. I could attack with Death Touch, but I won't do that. The only thing we we do leave ourselves open to counter magic if uh, we've because now we've let him on tap. But we'll see we'll see if that was uh, a mistake. We're well, tapping blue mana here to pump that up and give that a token. I get a poison counter. Let's see if there's another island that comes down. Although the, the two mana counter spell is a two point power sink, now that I think of it. So we could probably play around that if it did happen. Okay, get another oil counter there. So I'm thinking uh, Skitterfan gives himself Death Touch and attacks. I think we do that first. Uh, 
And then we will canopy. That is sorcery speed, isn't it? We will on top a green mana. Play Kanker Bloom. Pretty impressive, uh, yeah, Death Touch, uh, um, keep Skitterfang back, I think. So actually he could double block with, um, long legs and synthesizer to keep his death toucher but we we do have a rebel salvo of course uh right i think we just attack with a canker bloom and let's, let's take an all counter from that i want to give him lifelink Good trade. Okay, uh, we'll go for Scrap Gorger. We will untap. Play an Aspirant as well. Okay, oh, and he's got mana to proliferate as well, so that gets to two and I get to two poison oh two options so molten rebuke or rebel salvo yeah I think except this does blow up an equipment card Um, yeah, I can only get five mana out this turn, therefore I can't double spell. So I think it, yeah, we'll just use the Molten Rebuke. What am I talking about? I completely forgot about Armored Scrap Gorger. Silly me. Um, right, so, uh, go down to, okay, let's decline, let's decline that, and, um, uh, we'll do no attacks, actually, because he can double block an Aspirant. Does this, no, he probably won't trust an attack because they could have a combat trick oh well at least we can double spell next turn if he's got if he's got something worth blowing up this is a well, in a couple of oil count counters at time, it's getting quite dangerous. Uh, yeah, that's obviously going to blow up Skitterfang. Right, so I've just got to remember I can tap this. 
and start gobbling up um, his stuff. Not that he's going to be able to bring it back, but... This gets to 3-3 a bit quicker, otherwise. We can actually do two splitters, which is interesting. Um, think about my mistake. No, we can't. We This does not have an oil counter anymore. Okay, we will play one splitter in that case. Uh, I'll, then we'll tap this. I don't want to. I don't want to see that again either. Oh yeah, we can double spell if we want to use Rebel Salvo. We could equip this on a Blade Graph, yeah, on an Aspirant, like so. That's a 4-3. Um, he's got a block with two things. We don't mind trading for a Canker Bloom, I guess, so... Uh, yeah, let's take that. Let's give it lifelink. And it's getting through. That's pretty cool. Okay, and let's turn that. Things he can blow up. Splitter and Skitterfang. Oh, it's a Ruthless Predation. That's very nasty. Okie doke. Is that a trade-off? It's a trade-off. So that's getting to three. That's so with if he wants to proliferate with the long legs, he can get that to four and make it unblockable. Ah, but I've got my Venomous, Venomous Brutalizer, and it can come into play and proliferate, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I might just do that this turn. Let's tap that. Let's untap that. Let's tap that and take something out uh whatever's scary trawler drake scary play that and proliferate please And of course, this guy's a 3-3, so he can uh, get stuck in now. Okay, we did it. Very nice.
Okay, we've got a two drop, three drop, four drop. We're on the draw. So this is, on my turn it has first strike and trample. It's just a 2-2. A two -two. Good, we, we have drawn another land, so we're going to need maybe only five land. Uh, to play this guy because we'll have an atlas and one cost reduction. That would be pretty nice. Oh god. Venerated Rock Priest. That gets anointed, okay. Fair enough. Okay, we, uh... Right, interesting. We can do this for two mana. So... Doesn't quite work, does it? I was thinking I could do an Atlas. Uh, yeah, but this is a, you know, a one mana creature that requires removal before it gets out of hand. I think that's why it's uh, that's why it's a good card. So we'll have to we'll just have to blow this up, take a poison counter. You never know, he might have a second rock, rock Priest next turn, or a Protection spell. <laughs> he's got <laughs> he's got a way of bringing it back. Nice, I've got to give that a nice. Okay, uh, we can ha get a Brutalizer. I guess we don't care too much about uh, Proliferation. Yeah, we'll play the Brutalizer. Okay, rat plus rock priest. Yeah. We're worried about the swing back here. Um We can play a four two creature. And that could block the rock priest. He can double block this guy. Okay, I'm just going to not attack, and I'm going to um, play Vulshock Splitter. Because he's got a fast start. I'm hoping that he's going to run out of a bit of steam. Okay, he does hit a fourth land drop. Perfect. I really, really wanted that land drop, so now I can play Atlas and Skitterfang, which seems pretty cool to me. Um, oh, and we can even we can play Finisher. What's the sensible move here? Because uh, if we play Atlas. And we draw a land, we can play Palad Paladin of Predation next turn. Yeah, I mean... I want to play my Atlas at some point. Before I play my big things. Yeah, so I think it's a simple one here. Um... 
Let's give Brutalizer flying. And then we get him to Corrupted, which might be significant. He can attack with the rat now, because I won't want to block it. But actually, I will block the rat with the 4-2. I want to keep the Skitter Fang. So I'll, I will go to Corrupted, whatever happens, but at least, you know, it's one less blocker off the board. Head Cleaver. Okay, that's difficult to block. But I can do Finisher and... Rustvine Cultivator. Um, and I could just give this guy Vigilance because I notice, yeah, he's only got three power available to him. Actually, maybe we don't care. Maybe we just go for flying again. Do we care? Do we want lifelink? Let's be super safe. Okay, let's go for vigilance. Let's attack like that. See if he wants to block. Oh, got to hit next. Silly me. Goes to six poison. Okay, we can play Oxida Finisher and Cultivator. Okay, there's one toughness added to the board. This has trample already. How do I want to do this? Uh, we can give this guy flying. But he's, no, he's got trample. He's going to have to rustle up some toughness to throw in the way of this. Uh, this could get flying. So I think... Yeah, I want to go ahead and... Oh, that, that gives First Strike and Trample to something. So, let's see. Yeah, let's do Halberd on you. Splitter on you as well. Uh, Skitter Fang could... Let's just figure out the swing back here. Obviously, six, seven, eight, nine. He can't win with poison, right? Three, no. So I think um, I think I just attack with everything. Take action. And give yourself flying. All attack. So that's first strike trample on the brutalizer. That's 13 trample damage. There's two flying uh, damage. How much toughness has he got to block with? Five, six, seven, eight, nine against 13 trample. So six damage should be going through. He's going to block that with everything. He will draw a card of Testament Bearer if he blocks with that. Yeah, t two guys can block that and take him down.
Okay, okay, he's going to take a favorable block there. Okay. Um, yep, let's do that one. How much damage is that? Oh, he did we get him down to one? I could have tapped that in response. That would save some time. That's my second, uh, I think my second Phyrexian Atlas kill. Nice. Well, it's a good start. I'm not going to get uh, too carried away, though. Okay, one drop and a couple of three drops. I'm on the draw for a change. All right, he's got a one drop as well. Oh, we haven't seen this guy yet. Right, when his other creatures die, it um, gets a two-point drain life. Can only trigger once a turn. But yeah, it kind of draws a target on this guy. Take a plate golem, okay. Okay, Scrap Gorger can help me ramp. Um, I think the right thing to do is Bladecraft Aspirant, and then next turn we can uh, double spell. Uh, start making hill giants now, which may just be enough to really win it for him, really. So, unfortunately, fortunately only blows up... Um, oh, this isn't even the one that blows up equipment. Okay, let's get another old counter. Good. Didn't attack that turn. Right, Scrap Gorger and Skitterfang. Um, I say let's go for it. Give him death touch and just see if they want he wants to trade two creatures for this.
No, he does not. I think he can just win by making a hill giant every turn from here. Oh, he's going to play two creatures. Fair enough. Okay, this is the thing that destroys an equipment. I'm scared about this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and rebel salvo it. Which might be an overreaction. And I might stay on the defensive. This is, I mean, I could give li this lifelink and swing in. He's only trading for one creature. I think we'll decline that. Let's say next and uh, no attacks. So he has the upper hand here quite seriously. Unless we can get a nice big creature to gobble up these uh, hill giants or golems. I think Aspirant and Cultivator block this one. I'm going to go ahead and place, do this just to get rid of this from the graveyard. That seems like an idea. Glorious. And we've actually got six mana. We have a 4-4 four, four creature. Lord be praised. Right. Beautiful. And that can become a 3 3 creature as well, which is pretty good. Uh, I'll decline that and no attacks and enter. Uh, but he has a bigger creature, and it, it's going to survive a Molten Rebuke as well. I don't have poison counters, so you're sacrificing the Gladiator. Okay. I think I exile my Rebel Salvo, or... I'm not yet. I don't think I've got any way of getting my creatures back, so I'll exile my own creature. Oh, wait. Hello? He has a fleshless gladiator to exile. I forgot about that because it's not sitting in the graveyard.
Right. So, what do we uh, what do we want to do? I think we we fly in with this and tr we just try and uh, toxify this guy. It seems like a plan. Flying, please. Play a Vol Shock Splitter, so that's four two. It's going to spend two life. Oh, God. Pumping Titan to 8-8, eight, eight, I'm guessing. Giving it Vigilance as well, for good measure. Okay, so it doesn't have trample. I think I can just uh, lose my cultivator now. I've got seven. I, seven mana is all I need to cast the everything in the deck. So I think that's a good trade for eight life points. Um. Uh, yeah. Tell you what, this guy trades with the hill giant. Uh, I want to keep the scrap gorger because I do need. To that particular point of mana. Ah, oh, he's got a flyer. That's annoying. Okay, um... Okay, my turn. Or... Sure, let's take his land out. Okay, right, let's just figure this out. Seven. Seven mana. Plus that is eight mana. Uh, Molten Rebuke is blocker, I think. Equip the splitter, give it flying, attack for six, and we win next turn. Right. There isn't an equipment card here. Flying, please. Attack. I can't block, so he can do me 12 damage with these guys. I can't really block any of them, because I'm relying on the Skitter Fang to give this flying. Okay. He's playing green. He could have something to finish me off, which um, literally the Titanic Growth would win. But this can block next turn. 
this creature can block. I'll, I'll just take the risk. Okay, another Volshock Splitter. Question here is, seven mana. Could equip another one just to do two extra damage, right? There's no problem with that, is there? Make sure I do flying. <laughs> but target the right one, target flying. Yeah, nice. Survived a ravenous Necrotitan. That feels good. I got duffed up by two of those the other day. We've got at least 50-50 with this one. That's pretty good going. So the Rebel Salvo in that game we used on that 2-2 um, Legend that was going to do a two-point drain life every time he lost a creature. So that would have... If I hadn't done that, that would have um, extent given him an extra turn. Okay, this is a diamond player. We've got the all green hand. Um, we'll go with it. It's funny, when I go first, I always get a dodgy hand. But that's part of the deal, I guess. Oh, well, we draw a mountain. That's really nice. Let's see if he gives us a target for canopy. Ah, it's not an artifact. That's a shame. Oh, well, um, I think I want to skid a fang. It's a good, a good top deck. That so it gives me something to do. I want to give this life link and attack. And here I'm quite happy to trade Skitterfang for the Singer, because that thing's terrifying. He's going to Brutalist Predation anyway, okay. Nasty. And he's got three colours this deck. Okay. Uh, I think I like the Plague Nurse a bit better just because I can play this guy later and proliferate sometimes. Though this would still trade with Slaughter Singer even if he has the combat trick that makes him, gives him plus two, plus two. Okay, he has Death Touch. So far, no targets for Carnivorous Canopy. Or Canker Bloom, for that matter. Um, do we want to attack with Plague Nurse? Not really. I think just go in with Canker Bloom. So trading off there, fair enough, and we're not going to wait around with the Brutalizer, we'll just play it. But yeah, he hasn't hit any poison, I haven't landed any poison on him yet. Okay, well, we've got the brute force method of getting through a, a death toucher here think. Mm, 
each other creature gets gains toxic one. So there's no point uh, playing that. That's got the toxic two. Play it battle fist. Uh, of course, I can target my own thing with that if I really want to. Oh, three poison. I am now corrupted. That is a four color deck in, head of me, uh, in front of me there. Oh dear. That's not something I can kill. And he'll get back, of course. Oh, Basilisk. So it goes for the more defensive option. That makes sense. And my turn. But I. Ah! But our battle fist can be equipped to the plague nurse. Or even better, how about rebel salvo? We could now we could save that for the um this dude. But this way I get through with four poison and six damage. Which is pretty good, and he doesn't have mana for a counter spell. And I think I want to re-equip this. So he might have the creature that does uh, one damage. I mean, uh, does minus one, minus one. Oh, he's, you've got a, you've literally got a Glissa Sun Slayer. That's annoying. Okay, I've got uh, six mana. I still can't blow anything up. So, yeah. Glissa Sun Slayer is a bit of a headache. Last time I ran into her, it was followed up with Tyvar, and Tyvar was able to untap Glissa, so she could swing in and untap and be, a, it be an insane blocker every turn. Looks like it's he might have stabilised here. And yes, I'm going to massively regret that Rebel Salvo. <laughs> um, okay, well, he takes two life points there. Let's draw two. Ooh, incubation Sack's a good one. Well, that's a target for my Canopy. Well, that's going to draw him a card as well. And he can't attack with Sunslayer yet, right? Oh no, he's got two, two of them. So it feels feels pretty pointless blowing up one of them, but uh, yeah, he realised he can't attack with Sunslayer because he loses. Okay, my turn. Oh, there's the lovely land. And I think a Paladin of Predation seems pretty good, so I'll play that. Can't be blocked by the Basilisk, this guy, but he still just gets one-shotted by Glissa. So, blocker. Oh, he's got enough for another blocker as well. Maybe I should have blown up one of them. Ah, Ruthless Predation. <laughs> okay, it's a trade-off. And another blocker, okay. Uh, interestingly, I do have a Tyranax Atrocity. But isn't it 
typical. I don't have the mana to do both. Obviously, I'd have had to draw a land to do that. Um, right, that could be a 3-1. So, he blocks that. He has to chump block with his golem. Uh, he kills that. Uh, is that a good outcome for me? Uh, okay. Recap. Yeah, that di obviously dies. These trade off. He has to chump block there. And I don't have the mana to cast Canopy as well. So then he just makes two hill giants next turn and crushes me. Right. Um, I don't have Trample. Okay, I'm going to Canopy this one. And that's one less blocker he can get. And I want to put that on you. Uh, because that makes a bit more sense. No attacks and enter. What's he top decked? Come on. Ruthless Predation again. And then it, I can't kill him because he gets two toughness. Just top, casually top decks more removal. Does he think... Yeah, I mean, he's just making a hill giant as well. So he can quite happily attack with Glissa now and get ridiculous card advantage. Oh, he's going to keep Glissa on the defense. Okay, makes sense. If I somehow drew another Haster... Or if I drew... Okay, what well, my out here... Draw Rebel Salvo. Draw the other Rebel Salvo. Kill Glissa. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, 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 no, I, I don't have... Yeah, it will cost two because of the Batafist. Kill Glissa, play Haster, win. So no blocks. We're going to take uh, six damage. Okay, it's a uh, Vashok Splitter. We've got uh, seven mana. We'll, we'll hold on to the surprise atrocity, I think. Uh, no attacks and enter. Yeah, he had Ruthless Predation for the Paladin, and then he top decks another one for the Plague Nurse. Kind of annoying. Okay, we have to let that through. So we need removal, and... Oh, he's got a track, so of course, that's why he's playing four colours. <laughs> uh, ridiculous. Glissa Sunslayer and a Traxxer. Why not? And uh, turn two Slaughter Singer as well, by the way. In his four color deck. A uh, little issue with this one. It does give, um, yeah, life link. Uh, so he's going to go back up to 10 life, which is slightly annoying. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, play the Aspirant here. Um, obviously that is a 2-2 two -two if we take that off. Uh, yeah, no attacks. End turn. See, this is, this is why he's diamond, you see. He has a Traxxer. And Glissa Sunslayer. Just 
breezes through playing a four color deck like it's nothing plays one of the best two drops in the game on turn two um okay what's my out here this gets him to three poison but obviously that, that that's never happening in a million years um this guy has menace he's getting up to 10 he's getting up to 13 life I just trade off and hope for a miracle I think Atlas so that can do me a point of damage Go down swinging. Let's concede that one. So literally the turn after I use my removal spell, he plays Glissa Sun Slayer. But he's played uh, it's a it, yeah he played a four four Nimraiser Paladin, and I thought yeah this is good I can get in seven damage and two poison here if I use the removal spell. Otherwise I'm just offering a trade with Plague Nurse. Uh, yeah four three for four four. So it seemed reasonable, but yeah. You'll always remember the times that they have a Glissa Sun Slayer right after you use your removal spell, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. First time I've run into uh, a Traxa, I think, in, in draft. Unless I forgot the last time. Hmm. It's that going first with a crappy hand thing that it likes to pull on me. So, two drop plus a removal spell. Um, then I need to draw land. So it's not a terrible start. I think just need to draw land turn two or turn three how many times have people said that but um, having an aggressive two drop and a removal spell seems quite good to me draw another mountain Well, at least he's probably not got Glissa Sun Slayer. I could Rebel Salvo that swing for three. I'm going to wait though, because I can I can play a mere convert this turn, and that's pretty good. A little bit worried about Hazardous Blast. Oh, that's getting blown up because he knows I'm mana screwed. Fair enough. Um, do I use the Rebel Salvo now? So it still kills the thing if he's got Titanic Growth. Yep. 
This is the problem with a bad opening hand. You you use your because you've got nothing else to do. I think you tend to reuse your removal t too early because you think you know it's it's tempo. It's uh, I need to be using my mana on something. Yep, he made the right call there. He realised I was, I was screwed. Oh well, there's a, there's a cheeky chappy. It's funny. So we, we, yeah, we, you know, we drew the the. One of the fixing things, but yeah, was not enough. Okay, fair enough, yeah. He gets his atrocity. We can double block and lose both things. Uh, so the damage kills us here in five hits. The poison kills us in four hits. But we'll have an extra chump blocker if we take this guy out. But this will... we can use this, of course. If I can just get one mana, I've got Vashok Splitter. Terrible. Okay. Well, this thing equips for zero. So... 3-3 three, three and a 1-2 kind of might work. Oh, it's a 3-2 and a 1-2. That's my mistake. We'll just have to do that and see if... and just see the combat trick. Oh no, okay, trade-off. He could have applied that if he wanted. Okay, it's not a mountain. Go for a Vashok Splitter. First time we've seen the uh, Vindictive Flame Stoker. Didn't get to do very much. Okay, 3-3. Three, three. Haste up, sure. You're holding back a Plague Nurse? Because you don't want to trade your Plague Nurse. Yeah, fair enough. Hmm, for Fifth Mountain, okay. A Vashok Splitter. Starting to feel like I should have mulliganed. Oh god, he's got the thing. So he can kill the. Uh, yeah, so then I can't block, really. Don't really want to chump block. Um, well, there's the green. That's good. Um, it was 15 cards down the first forest, unfortunately. Not two cards down, as I was hoping. Um, three mana to do that on here. We do have Carnivorous Canopy. Um, on the other hand, Cultivator. We can put that on there to make him a 2-1. So you could trade off with a shrapnel slinger. So we'll do that and do that. Ah, he's got the blazing crescendo, sure. What did he get? Uh, basilisk, oh, that's nasty as well. Um, zero three. Right. Well, this gets me to. Uh, yeah, it's going to be four toxic. So I'm probably dead in two turns to this. Um, scrap gorge out. Let's check. This is six mana, and it's four to equip these things, and I. 
can trade this off with a basilisk and that might slow down the inevitable. Worth a shot. Not going to attack with the basilisk. Okay. Okay, canker bloom. Canker bloom. So, I think we want to Goodbye, Butterfist, we could I'm going to put a Splitter on there so he doesn't have one toughness Okay, I'm going to do that it that way. So I'm taking three. I'm getting to eight poison. I think we'll just... Oh, oh, God, no, no. Master blockers... <laughs> That does once in a while that does catch me out. Right, let's tap this for mana. Get rid of that one. So I might need to blow up the splitter this turn, so that's doing a bit less damage. But then I probably still got a chump block with this guy. Oh wait, no, I will be able to proliferate and then tap it when he attacks, boosting me to 3-3, three, three, right? Okay, my turn. Fraction Atlas, okay. Um, trying to figure out I don't think there's much point playing the Atlas unless of course okay what are all the things I want to do three three mana, three mana, six mana plus that is nine mana right, it's, seven, it's seven mana um, because that gives me one uh, one mana back so two, eight mana. Right, yeah. Keep it simple. Okay. Don't do the atlas. We blow. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. We can blow that up. Damn it! It was a four drop. I've blown up my own barbed batter fist. Um, yeah, if I'd blown up my own barbed batter fist, it would have uh, helped me, help me win. Help me win. Help me trade off with a plague nurse. Okay, I think that's a good game. Okay, can't block anyway. It's all academic. Can 
can keep stopping because I can tap to get something out of this graveyard. Well, yeah, it's interesting. I am getting to go first a few times. But it's I always have a, a bad opener that I should mulligan. That I, choo I always choose to not mulligan. Uh, right, let's go again. It was a two-drop creature and a removal spell. So kind of three unusable cards. So it's a good argument for mulliganing that one when you're going down to six cards. It's a very good chance you're going to get more than four castable cards. Okay, uh, opponent goes first. Well, you see, I was complaining about going first and having a terrible hand. Now I'm getting, going second and my hand is very questionable. So I can fix the hand on turn three with Atlas and play a Flamestoker on turn three. That seems pretty bad. I will get to draw an extra card. I'm going to keep it as well because I've got, I've got the mana fixing. Oh, that's good. Cultivator. Nice top deck. Sizer Glider. Okay, another of those. Okay, never mind. I think that's a pretty good target for a Carnivorous Canopy. That's also a pretty good target for Carnivorous Canopy. Get an oil counter. Right, so I would love to play the Atlas, but on balance, let's shoot that out of the sky. Get another token. Could swing in for some damage. No, I might get another oil on that, I think. Okay. Okay, there he is. Paladin of Predation. And okay, we beat the greedy move. Oh, I tell you what. It only untaps land. Naturally. Uh, we can double block and kill an indoctrination attendant. I'm going to play the. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to play a flame stoker because I want to get all these triggers from um, playing barbed batter fists. You know what, we've got four, five, six mana, so on land and we can play Paladin of Predation. <clears throat> Doesn't seem right, does it? Okay, you can play that as well, I suppose. I've got a good blocker for that, if I can just draw a land. Okay. Uh, let's remember to tap this. No, not happening. Uh, but this can do a one for one trade with the attendant. It's just that he can discard anything to blow up my token, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, 
but never mind. It is what it is. Forest, blow that up. Yep. Sure. Yeah, it's getting flying, so that gets through as well. So it's at yeah, 10 damage. Uh, what's expendable at the moment? Because we are taking. This is. Well, this can make Mastic or Flying, unfortunately. So we just lose, even if we play a Paladin. So, I think I've got to chomp block the Master Core this turn. Yeah, he's not having a fun time, the uh, Vindictive Flame Stoker. Down to nine. Probably still dead anyway. But we can get an oil counter on this guy. Okay, no, it's it's not happening. Uh, there's nothing much we can do with two forests, so no attacks and turn. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll do what we can here. Block four damage there, trade there. Uh, nine, ten, eleven. Well, it doesn't make any difference. So. Yeah. Yeah, bad opening hand should have mulliganed, definitely. Um. It was tempting because I could fix my opening hand with the Atlas on turn 3 and play a 1 drop on turn 3. But that's a little bit slow. That's very slow. Well, we went 3 0 and then 0 3. It happens with, yeah, getting. Uh, I think game 4 there was some. must have had some. I feel like there were some rares involved in that one. Uh, but I'm okay with that. This uh... right. So weird. Yeah, slightly weird deck because um, we had a little bit of everything. We had we drafted oil. We drafted a red equipment, and we drafted green uh, toxic. So I went for. Equipment and toxic. Drop the most of the oil. Um, but I thought the yeah the flame stoker goes well in the equipment deck because it can get lots of triggers potentially. Uh, first time playing with scrap gorge, uh, I think maybe first time with canker bloom as well. So a couple of good two drop creatures. And uh, getting two rebel sal salvos is fantastic. Um, Carnivorous Canopy, we were actually s struggling a little bit to find targets with this. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, seems reasonable. Usual as usual, we've got Skitterfang, which is a great card. Uh, yeah, I've had a good run of finding uh, Venomous Brutalizers as well. And we tried the two really big creatures. I think we played Paladin once and it immediately got killed by um, a Death Touch fight spell thing. Yeah, the uh, tell you what, game four that was where we ran into Glissa Sun Slayer, uh, which stabilised the board after I'd used my removal spell, and then eventually, then a few turns later, he played a track so because yeah, so I was wondering why he was playing a four color deck, but that was that was the reason. And then just sort of a bit mana screwed game five, game six. I'm just. Still not that keen on Mulligan's uh, twenty twenty hindsight and all that probably would have been a good idea in those two. If you've only got sort of four cards you can play in your opening hand, it's you know you're only Mulliganing it. You're only going you're going down to six cards, so it's uh, I think that's probably the how you uh, should measure it. Okay, let's claim the prize. 300 gems. Nice. Well, I think that is a video, so thanks for watching.